Dwayne Perry is limited, TJ Bryant limited, Drew McAllister limited, Khalid Holmes limited, Michael Reardon was full, Mitch Mustaine limited, DJ Morgan limited, Xavier Grimble is out. As far as yesterday, um, unfortunately, just when we thought we were going to the opener, Scholarship was doing extremely well for us. Playing center and guard was our backup center. And so hopefully we'll get him back. He does not have a red shirt here, so if he comes back, we would play him um, when he gets back. As far as practice, I think the stuff's getting a little bit old for them. You know, we, we were in our second week and we're on the same place, which is probably good. I think we've done a good job as coaches of not getting bored ourselves and adding more plays. We we'll just continue to run the same stuff. So we should have no excuse for not playing fast on offense, defense, special teams as far as knowing what to do with all this practice time we've had towards Hawaii. Does, um, does Reardon become the, the backup center at this point? Yeah, Mike will be our backup center. He's played some in there. We're going to have to get him ready. Obviously, for focus more on center. He was more focused on guard. What's Khaled Holmes' status for the game? Has he been cleared to, to play? I don't really know what that means. We don't have a status of cleared for play. Okay. He was limited today. He was limited. Okay. What, uh, how do you feel about generally where the offensive line is at collectively? Well, I think that they've done everything they can. Uh, unfortunately, they've had a lot of days without everybody there. So yeah. they haven't had a chance to really play together with the same guys in the same spots. So you know, that, that, that hurts them that way. But it's not their fault. They've done everything they can. They've worked extremely hard. They've had a good camp. The guys that have been healthy have been there. So I think it'll be a work in progress as they continue to challenge. Does it concern you in terms of the running? You've, you've talked about you really don't know what's going to happen. But that with that particular group in the shape it's in, does that concern you in terms of the running game? Yeah, it does because we've not uh, we've not cut really except for that day we did with the threes out there. Preseason game two, I think. So you know we we don't have any idea up there. You know, you know that's going to be a big question mark. Tackling on defense, holding onto the ball on offense, and how we play up front in the run game because it's going to be it's going to be pretty new for them. Who does become the backup center if Reardon were to get dinged up again? We would actually probably have to move Khalid inside. Um, you know, if we had to go to a third, we would play another guy guard. Where's Kyle Prater right now in the mix at uh, receiver? Yeah, Kyle um, has really had an up and down camp, just like spring. Works extremely hard. He's going to be a great player here for us. Probably the, you know, the best hands on our team, catches everything. You know, after a number of conversations with him, his family, we're going to lean towards not playing him and, and possibly redshirt him this year. He's a, his competitive side wants to fight through that and go out there, but he's just not 100%. You know, we feel he's, he's going to be so good when he is that you know, we don't want to throw him out there when he's not 100%. So we're fortunate to have enough guys that, that hopefully we can do that and afford to do that at, at that position. And um, that way he can really get healthy, continue to get stronger. And, Look for a great career here um, starting next year. Did, did you go over the captain's selections? Uh, I did not. The captains are Stanley Habili, Matthew Barkley, Shreesh Wright, and then there's two more defensive captains. It was going to be two and two, but there was an exact tie with Michael Morgan and Malcolm Smith. So there will be five captains. What does it say about how the guys feel about Habili that you know, he was involved in that incident before camp and yet they still voted for him? Yeah, and, and a ton of votes, too. Uh, I think yeah. it says exactly what, what we felt when it happened. It was a surprise. You know, it, was a, it was a very poor decision by him, one that is out of character for him being here a long time, what these players think about him. And like I said, all that stuff goes into the decision-making as a, as a coach. And if you recall back, you know, players coming to me, including TJ saying he needs to be on our team. You know, he needs to be here, and that wasn't about 
because he makes plays as about who he is and how bad he felt and how he handled it even that day right afterwards um, with TJ. How many uh, players are you going to take to Hawaii? Not that, I don't know. I think it's, um, I think we ended up, it was going to be 72 and now Abe's not going. Um, so I think that, that, I think that we're taking 71. Um, it's not unusual for a quarterback to be a captain on a team, but it's somewhat unusual for a sophomore. What does it say about Matt's leadership or how far it's come that they have the work for him? Yeah, and a true sophomore. And with a, a bunch of guys to, to vote for, you know, there's a bunch of um, senior good leaders. You know, uh, Johnson, Allen, Bradford, just to name a couple. You know, and, um, uh, I think that Chris O'Dowd. So for him to be named over those guys as a sophomore, just says about his work ethic and that they've seen what he's done this offseason. They've seen how he's changed his body, his approach to the game. Um, he wants to be the best, and he's working that way. On a scale of one to ten, where, where do you feel the team is right now? I mean, as far as you being satisfied. I can't tell. I mean, there's, I don't have an, a, enough to evaluate that to to make a grade or give a number on that because we haven't done, we haven't simulated a game. And so I think they've worked hard. I think their attitude's been really good. I think we're going to be. I know we're going to be strong. Um, we're going to be rested. We'll see what happens on the end. How much is your pregame run-up routine in terms of walkthroughs, practices? That could, how much a different. Is it going to be this year than it was in your when you were here, you know, as a as a coordinator? Are you guys going to have the same kind of schedule, or are you going to do things differently? Yeah, there's a there's a million ways to do things, and people do them all different ways and win all kinds of different ways. Um, it's a little bit different approach. It's a little bit tighter. That doesn't mean it's better by any means. You know, the last approach won 34 straight games and seven straight conference championships. You know, but you have to be yourself. You, know, you have to let your own personality on your team, so we'll be a little bit tighter with them and not quite as loose. That's just how we'll approach it. Early in the season, do you think we'll see tangible, a tangible impact from the special teams, the new special teams coach and approach to it? I hope so. I mean, I hope in the first quarter, as much time as we've given towards it. You know, um, 45 minute walkthroughs on special teams, 20 minutes every day out here, 20 minute meetings. You know, no, and that's not him, that's me. You know, I've, I've dedicated that time. To it, so our offensive and defensive coaches haven't been excited about that. It's time they lose. I mean, none of them have seen this much time, but it was, it was too important to come in here to, to me, to establish special teams. Our players need to feel a difference, not just by the style, but by the time. And so, if we're taking time away from offense and defense, you know, to me, they notice that, and that, that tells how serious they are about it. You know, that we're not just giving. Lip service, lip service, and say we're going to play really well on special teams. We're going to dedicate our time and energy towards it and our resources that we have. What do you see when you look at special teams now each day? What, what jumps out at you? Well, I just think, you know, our, our guys, I just had a vision that we could play on special teams like we did on offense and defense when we were here before. And our guys would know it the same way and they would have the same attention towards it and, and, and the techniques being sound, and I think we are, and the same thing we'll see, it really matters, but I think our guys are in a good place. Is Patrick Hall uh, attending classes while he's here? Yes, yeah, Patrick's uh, attending classes. We're still giving full academic services, still trying to work with him, get him on, on the same page as the rest of our team. You know, I've said it before, it's a privilege to play here. You know, this is, this is the best football program in America. If you put on scholarship here, you know, that's a privilege. And, you need to continue to learn that by your actions.